Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to share some of my latest antique store finds. So these are things that I've found and purchased within the last few months that have made me happy. What I'm hoping for is that you guys in the comments below maybe share with me things that you've bought recently if you go antique shopping or, you know, just anything interesting going on in your lives that you want to share. In no particular order, let's go with this. This is an adorable cup and saucer set. It says Cornell University, founded by Ezra Cornell. I went to Cornell, so I thought this was really cute. It looks vintage and it's so small that I feel like a doll when I drink from it. I wish it said a little bit more. So it says Cornell University founded by Ezra Cornell, which is true, but I would have expected it to say something like founded in 1865, which I think is usually on things. Either way, I don't know when it was made. There are no dates or anything on this, but I thought it was cute and I bought it. Next up, dun, 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 dun. It's so pretty. How pretty is this? It's an adorable bottle and it looks like I should have some sort of potion in here or perfume, but I don't wear perfume. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but I just thought it was so pretty and magical looking. It's funny, whenever I'm in an antique store, I find myself gravitating towards colored glass. I don't know, maybe I have bitters. I could put bitters in here or something. I don't know what bitters even is. If anyone has any good ideas for what I could do with this or what I could put in here, please tell me in the comments below. Or if you have any thoughts on what time period this may have come from, I'm assuming it's not that old, probably like, I'm not sure if this is depression era. I didn't buy it because I assumed it was old. I bought it because it looks awesome. So I found this in an antique store in Florida. Inside, you won't find much information. But what you will find are portraits of historical figures. It shows their portrait, their name, and dates. I bought this because, as I've mentioned many times, I love looking at historical faces. And so to see portraits of all of these different people, many of whom I don't know, have never heard of. And it also intrigued me that there wasn't any information, so there's no copyright date in this book. So if anyone has ever heard of this before, portraits, historique, French, I would love to know. My guess is it was published sometime in the very late 1800s. The last date here that I see is 1883. So it would have been sometime after that. Next up, we have this plate. This was made for the bicentennial, so 1976. And on the back, it says, this map shows the holdings received between 1685 and 1706 by the original Dutchess County patentees whose coat of arms form the border of this plate. The Glebe House was built in 1767 and is preserved today. So of these patentees, we have, going clockwise, Phillips, Van Wagenen, Schuyler, Sackett, Kyler, Graham, Fauconier, Beekman, Elting, Rusa, Kip, Sanders, Brett, Van Cortland, and Verplank. A lot of these names are familiar and a lot are not. It's funny, growing up, I assumed that this spelling of Schuyler was the most common one because I had seen it so often. And then I started meeting people named Schuyler and it was always spelled differently. So I would love to know what you think is the normal spelling of the name Schuyler. This is a deck of cards celebrating the century of progress. This was another Chicago World's Fair. So the one that I've been most interested in was the Chicago World's Fair of 1893, but this is called A Century of Progress. It was in 1933 and I guess 1934 because of the date on this. It was celebrating the city's centennial. So when I saw these cards for sale, I thought, why not? Next up, I'm just going to show all of the stereo cards that I've bought from antique stores within the past few months. It's funny because anytime I'm at an antique store and I see stereo cards for sale, I'm like, well, I roll up my sleeves and I have to dig through because they're usually all just clumped together in a shoebox. Every time I do that, I come away with just so much dirt on my fingers, but what are you gonna do? This card says, Young America Dictating. Not only did I think this was adorable, these two children playing grown up, but I also saw a copyright 1897. So anytime I see a stereo card from the 1800s, I'm more likely to buy it because, wow, you can look at the 1800s in 3D. Next, 
I got this that's labeled the young artist. There is no copyright on this, but look at how this child is dressed. That's straight out of the 1700s. Obviously this photo isn't, but to see someone from the past dressed like someone from even, even farther in the past, to me, was a cool find. Here's another one I bought. There's no information on it, but there's a lot going on. These people look like they're on a double date and the men are making moves on the women and they don't seem overly enthused. I mean, the one in the back is holding hands with her man, so who am I to say? But the one in the foreground, the woman, she doesn't look super happy. It's just cool to see their interactions, you know, what romance could have looked like back then. I don't really know the context that this was taken, so it could, I mean, it was likely staged for the camera. Next up, it's not in the best condition, obviously. What you see is a girl in some sort of wheelchair contraption, which I feel like is pretty rare. Have you ever seen a dog and thought, wow, that dog looks like it belongs in the 1800s? <laughs> and last but not least, we have this one that I thought was hilarious. It's called That's You, no date, and it has a boy pointing to a silly drawing of a person, and it says, that's you. And I thought this was so funny because growing up with my siblings, anytime a hideous creature, a monster, anything really ugly would come on screen, we'd point and say, look, it's you. So this really reminds me of being a child. I mean, we still do it to this day, but when I saw this, I couldn't believe it because look how old that joke is. We're all the same. People haven't really changed that much, I guess, in terms of sense of humor. <laughs> okay, that's it for stereo cards. Now let's look at photos. So anytime I'm in an antique store, I go and I look at photos, cabinet cards, carte de visite, I don't know how to say that. I bought this because, first of all, her outfit is really interesting and also her facial expression sort of looks maybe apprehensive or just unsure. What is she thinking here? What's her story? Next up, so when I see photos of whole families together, sometimes it makes me more inclined to buy because, you know, it's more bang for your buck, more faces you can stare at. It's fun to just imagine their family dynamic. These were real people who had personalities and hopes and dreams and fears and what year was this from and what events in the world did they live through and what, you know, made an impression on them and what scared them, et cetera, et cetera. Last, we have this boy. His haircut, adorable. His outfit, adorable. His pose, adorable. His smile, adorable. What did he grow up to do and be? And who is this person? It's unfortunate that there are never, you know, names of these people. Last image is this tin type. It is a woman with two boys, and this looks so old. Her facial expression was really interesting to me. This isn't how women today pose for photos. Before I move on to my last purchase, I wanna ask you guys what you look for in antique stores, if you are the type of person who likes going in antique stores. So when I go into an antique store, I'm always looking for the following. I look for any interesting images of people from the past. I look for stereo cards of things that I find interesting. I look for anything handwritten. So in a previous video, you saw me read a handwritten letter from 1893 talking about the fair, and that changed my life. I look for phonographs, like wax cylinder phonographs. The actual machine is really expensive, so I don't own one, but I always look at the price to see if today is gonna be the day that I will own a wax cylinder phonograph. I look for anything Victorian hair art. I am fascinated by Victorian hair art, and maybe some people think it's morbid, but I think, wow. So you can see people from the past, you can hear their voices, and you can actually own parts of them in a not weird way, because like they made it to be looked at. Yes, sign me up. But they're pretty expensive and I don't own that yet. But if anyone wants to send me any Victorian hair art. So what do you guys look for in antique stores? What interests you? Anyway, let's move on to the final thing. This one I bought online, not in an antique store. And this is my first time opening it. I opened the top, but I haven't seen it yet. This is a diary from 1890. Let that sink in. 1890. I'm not worthy. Snowed a little last night. Gathered nine barrels of sap and boiled it down. Christmas Eve, odd jobs today, as the boys did not want to cut wood. 
It's such an insane way to connect with someone. You know, they were the last people to really focus on that particular page. And so it goes from them to me. It's like this weird connection through time of this personal thing. History is so cool. This is written in pencil. So now I need to do research on the best way to preserve something written in pencil. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit subscribe. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in upcoming videos. See you next time.